Well, it looks like injuries are not going to end at Manchester United as we welcomed back other players from the injuries they've been expecting. Obviously, more injuries have befell United. Two injuries have been confirmed by Eric Ten Hag today as he really held the press conference of Manchester United versus, of Manchester United versus West Ham. A tie that is going to happen tomorrow at the Old Trafford Stadium where we knocked out Barcelona. I believe that's the last time we played there. And obviously the manager is going to hate to reveal to us who is back, who is expected to return and who is injured and doubtful for the fixture of a team called United versus West Ham. Welcome to United Matters Channel. How are you guys and where are you watching us from? This is Rock and David. I've gone ahead to really pick out the most important things that I talked about and I really found it important to really deliver them to you before we do our last video of the day. Second video of the day. Thank you guys for watching in and it's Rock and David and let's enjoy this. Hope you guys are really ready to go on and roughly to rumble with me. Smash the like button, comment and share. If at all you're watching us for the very first time, lower right bottom corner is the place to be. Smash the black button that has the word subscribe. After smashing it, hit the notification bell that will enable you get notified every time I upload a video onto this channel. Now, Ten Hag no sooner had the press conference started than he told us that Anton Martial is not available. Luke Shaw and Fred are questions for tomorrow. So, Luke Shaw and Freddy are doubts. And I see no way he's going to force them into this fixture. For Anton Martial, however much we've seen him training alone and we expected him to return by the game of Barcelona when he never showed up for the game of Barcelona. We expected him to be available when you're playing when you're playing which team when you're playing uh newcastle he was out of the squad even today he's out of the match squad that's going to play tomorrow against west ham uh, that means maybe he'll make the trip to liverpool on sunday and that might be one of the reasons as to why the manager eric ten Hag doesn't want to really hurry him back because he believes that he's going to need him a lot in the remaining games of the season and maybe the physios have gone ahead to diagonize Anton Martial and the results have shown that he has been hurriedly brought back most of the times and that has really led to his recurring injuries that have really gone ahead to sabotage his career at Old Trafford this year. And we all know that when Martial is with us, we play very, very well and that's why Eric Ten Hag is in need of another world-class striker. Come, come the summer transfer window that's it for anton martial the two injuries that have really hit united are freddy and luke shaw now i expected this to happen because luke shaw is no longer an injury prone player i think this is the second time that is being talked of as one of those players out of action and doubtful freddy i think this is the first time or second time they are not injury prone players but when you look at the number of games that Luke Shaw and Fred have played, obviously expected them to have some knocks with them. Freddy, he played with Casemiro. Ever since Ericsson got an injury, Freddy has been playing. Remember, he played, he played in the game of Crystal Palace. I think for that, he just came on. But he played with Casemiro in the double pivot. As we are beating Crystal Palace, ever since then, Crystal Palace has been playing 90 minutes. Leeds, both games, he played 90 minutes. Those are three games. Uh, Barcelona, he has been playing almost 90 minutes. That is Fred Rodriguez for you. Then the game of Crystal Palace, I think that's when the manager, not Crystal Palace, Leicester City, the manager really got him off the field. Then he played 90 minutes in the game of Barcelona. And um, over the weekend, he played close to 70 minutes. Sabitza came on towards the 70th minute and Fred was taken off. So, with all those minutes played, expect injuries to surface. And Freddy and Luke Shaw are the culprits. Luke Shaw has almost played every game. He has been playing every game. And sometimes, whenever he was played, whenever he was not played as a left back, he was played as a left center half. I think there is only one game I saw him being benched. It was the game of Leicester City where Alessandro Martinez partnered with Victor Linderoff in the central defense and then Malasia played as the left back. 
Did Malasia play as the left back? Or it was Luke Shaw? I think it was Luke Shaw who played as the left back in that game of Leicester City. And when they took him off, they brought on Aaron Wan-Bissak and Dalo played as a left back. So it shows you how hard it has been for these players to go out through all these games without getting injured. And if at all you saw my predicted starting 11 of United versus West Ham, I came out and put out the following players that... I came out and put out the following players that they are really going to... that they are really going to be out or on the bench they need to be rested veran look show uh veran look show uh fred rodriguez anthony rashford those five players needed to be rested and these two are really injured and it's really going to hit us hard but the good thing is that casimiro is here sabitza is there and scott mctominay is back meaning that we're not going to miss a lot freddy and the good thing with these two players when they get injured they don't take long to get back that's it and we know that malasia can get the job done in whatever magnitude of a game we are going to play malasia can get the job done that's the beauty of malasia secondly freddy sabitza is there he is better than fred that's it However much Fred has been really magnificent, but I believe Sabitza is a better player. That means tomorrow it's going to be Casimiro and Sabitza in the double pivot. A double pivot that we've all been waiting for. And yesterday I came out and insinuated that Ten Hag is going to unleash it in the game of West Ham. And let's see how that is going to go on because I believe it's really going to be so much good to watch those players play. So bad to see these players injured for me i never wanted them injured i wanted them to be on the bench to be rested to be ready for the liverpool game but i know if all goes well they are really going to find themselves in a position of playing against liverpool because we want to go to liverpool when martial is available rashford available looks sure available um fred sabitza casimiro lisandro martinez rafael verani we want to go full army that's it we want to go full blossom to that side. Real Madrid went and put five goals past Liverpool. I think in the form in which we are right now, this is the biggest derby in or the biggest rivalry in English football. We have to go there. They came to Old Trafford. They trounced us five goals to nil. It's high time. We paid back. It's a revenge. We paid back to Liverpool. That's why we should have all these players available, such that we are having a very, a very fat bench for us to choose on. As Eric Ten Hag has shown us, that he's the master of making substitutions. He makes those. He makes some early and others late. So, let's leave that at that, and let's get into the next story. <coughs> oh, sorry about that. Then, Ten Hag has gone ahead and really praised his squad. And this is what he had to say about praising his squad. He said, the ones who played less did a good training session. Let's make, my, let's make, let's make myself clear. We didn't win with 11 players. We did win with the squad. And I think the squad, the whole season is so important. And every team players come in if it's for a whole game minutes and he has gone ahead to assert it on several occasions that this is a squad game it's not a team game it's a squad game and he said we win we won as a squad not as 11 players he said a couple of games also during games we can change the dynamics we do it with many more than 11 players so i count on them and i know they will be ready because every time they play they take responsibility and it's about that but you also have to fight for your position that is mr eric ten hag for you and then about praising the squad he said there can be great more months ahead of us and great games and everyone wants to play games the players who form the best teams will play so it's also for harry Maguire when he plays well he can come in into the team so for here he has gone ahead to hint about harry Maguire, and i really ask myself why does harry Maguire have a journalist Ava, in the press conferences of Eric Ten Hag, that comes out and raises a question of why Maguire isn't playing or is going to feature. Why don't we have some, peop some people that come up and redo the needful 
to ask such questions for Linderov, Rafael Varane, you get, and other good, good, good players. Because <coughs> I think Linderov has proven to be a better player than... I think Linderov has proved to be a better player than <coughs> Harry Maguire when it comes to partnering with either Luke Shaw or Lisandro Martinez or Rafael Varane. But why don't we have people coming in through to throw such questions in? Because Harry Maguire is English. You get? Because Harry Maguire is English. And yesterday, I was watching the Kelly and Wright show on my TV here. They are really, they are really asking themselves, why is it that the English tabloid has not yet gone out to call out the sacking of the Chelsea manager, Graham Porter? Do you know the reason they gave? It was because this was because he's English. That's it. And they refer to Eric Ten Hag that when Eric Ten Hag lost the first game to Brighton, they told they, they said Eric Ten games. Eric Ten games. Meaning that by the 10th game, United would have already gotten rid of the manager. <laughs> That's it. Because they never knew what Eric Ten Hag was all about. They went all after him. And when we lost 4-0 to Brentford, oh, it went from bad to worse. They just painted the entire situation that he is not good enough. He's going to be like the other Dutch money that coached Middlesbrough for only two, three games and was sacked. It was sarcasm of the highest order. And this is when I got to know how ludicrous, sorry, ludicrous, these English pundits are. And he has ashamed them. He has just won a trophy over the weekend. He's here on Wednesday tomorrow playing against West Ham and willing to go on and really win more and more and more and more trophies for Manchester United and proving all of them wrong and Ferguson is hailing him left, right and centre. Then Ten Hag concluded and said, it was not my perspective from the celebrations. I think everyone was involved, everyone was happy and everyone had the idea. We did it collectively. Not individual one, not individual one, two, three players did this. It was the performance of the whole team, the whole squad. That is Eric Ten Hag for you. And I like the way he doesn't take he doesn't take the he doesn't take all the all the rewards, all the praises to himself. He extends it to his coaching staff, to the players, and to the board. So it shows you how good he is and obviously he was asked about how united made it possible to make that bounce back to an extent that they're gonna hate to win the trophy after losing against brentford and brighton in opening two games he said i know from experience from previous jobs it takes time before you get into a way of playing ten hag explained before you get into the rules and the principles you get routines into a team and time is not always going with the right results that is Eric Ten Hag for you. And you have to agree with what he's saying because he's the man that masterminded the comeback of Manchester United. And so, why should we even react to what he's telling us? I just have to come here and really tell you what the manager is really trying to tell us about the comeback. Then he concluded about the comeback from the bad start by saying, so when the right results were rent there at the start of the season, I didn't panic because I knew it was part of the process. You find out, you learn a lot in those weeks when you lose. It's not nice. You hate to lose. So, he knew that it was part of the process and I think he told the Glazers that it might not be the start that we want, but we have to go on and really face the pain. And through pain, we'll find ourselves really getting ourselves to the levels where we want to be. And it showed you that he had a plan for it because the way he reacted to it after losing those two games, especially the phony loss to Brentford, and he went he went old school. He got those players. They ran 13.5 kilometers because Brentford had ran 13.5 kilometers more than the entire players of United combined. And he never let them do that alone. He was part of them. He ran with them and orchestrated to them that we are in this together. So when you are on that pitch, just know you are there to go on and put your bodies on the line, not only for the club, but for me, the manager. Then he said, but you also get some good lessons and you get a view of what are the opportunities, what are the deficits, and you can work on that and the way you play. Now, to me, I believe if we never lost those two games, we wouldn't have gotten Casemiro. That's it. 
When does Casemiro come in through? Casemiro comes in through after losing to Brentford and Brighton. Remember, we played on Saturday and our next game was going to be a Monday. United went in for Rabio. It failed. They went in for Casemiro and obviously we got him. But according to Casemiro, it means it, it looks like United had already started to talk to his agent because Casemiro said that after watching that game of United losing 4 to Brentford, he, told, he texted his agent and told him, tell them I'll fix it. And obviously, he's the Mr. Fixer. He has fixed it and everything is really doing great for United. But I think it propelled the signature of Casemiro because after missing out on, on De Jong, Ten Hag wanted a player to come in through and really do that job very, very well. Then, after that, Ten Hag talked about the team effort. He said, it was not my perspective from the celebrations. Everyone was involved. We did it collectively. It was the performance of the team and the whole squad. That is Eric Ten Hag. Then he said about moving on to the next challenge. He said, of course, yesterday the players were still enthusiastic and they had to celebrate this momentum. But yesterday, after we settled down, we get back to work and did what we do, which was recovery. And that's what Ten Hag said about his players and how they reacted and... That's all he said in the press conference ahead of the game of West Ham. But the notables talk about the two injuries of Luke Shaw. <clears throat> then, and Freddie and Anton Martial not being available. And the players who never took part a lot into that beautiful game of football that saw us win against, that saw us win against uh, Newcastle by two goals to nil. We just found ourselves in a position of really 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 scoring two goals and those players that just came in through and never played a lot sabitza sancho mm, scott mctominy harry maguire came on through and got themselves involved with the likes of ganacho uh, elanga perez to, to train full training and the others just did recovery training. And I think today they've really done some good training. And tomorrow they're really ready to play part. Now, your thoughts on to the two more injuries that have hit Eric Ten Hag's camp are welcome in the comment section below. And your thoughts on what has said about the comeback and all what he did on the serious comeback of United are welcome in the comment section below. Rock and David remains my name. I sign out for now. See you later as we are returning with the last story of the day. I sign out for now. See you later, my beautiful.